Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. We're gonna do a little bit of a driving video here. And also I'm gonna give you guys my impressions of the recent uh, Facebook Meta Connect event that they just had. They announced a couple of different products. The first one was the Meta Quest 3S, which is a more budget version of their VR headset. I think the price for that is $299. And it's probably gonna be very attractive to a lot of people that are new to the VR space. Another one of their products is the Orion augmented reality glasses. So that gives us a peek into the future of what a lot of manufacturers are trying to accomplish. They're trying to get these features into frames that look pretty much like a normal pair of eyeglasses. And they also made some announcements about some future software updates for the Ray-Ban Meta Smart Glasses. If you're like me, you were probably expecting an update to the Ray-Ban Meta Smart Glasses that came out last year. It's been about a year now since they've been launched. And I was a bit disappointed that they didn't announce a new version, but at the same time, I'm not very surprised that they didn't release a new version. And there's a couple of different reasons why. In the keynote, Mark Zuckerberg even mentioned it. I don't think Facebook had any idea how popular the Ray-Ban Meta Smart Glasses were gonna be when they were launched. And I think there are a couple of reasons for that. So the first reason is the fact that they were able to develop this wearable product, an eyeglass frame that looks really good and isn't bulky. So I'm wearing the Ray-Ban Meta Smart Glasses right now in glossy black with uh, just a standard prescription lens. And it feels really comfortable and it looks good. So that in itself is a huge accomplishment because I think this is the ultimate goal for any manufacturer out there that's trying to create a smart wearable eyeglass. It's basically to put all those tech features into the product without increasing its size to the point where people wouldn't want to wear it. Number two is how good all of the different features are. So these glasses have the ability to record video, take pictures, there are speakers on the temples so you can listen to music, you can listen to audiobooks, you can take calls, it has AI features as well. You're able to say hey meta and then ask some questions and get a response. So it's able to do a lot of the basic functions that you would expect out of a wearable. And the quality of most of those features are actually really, really good. So for example, video functionality on this has actually gotten even better with software updates. At the very beginning, the max length of clip that you could record was something like 30 seconds or maybe 60 seconds, I forget. But now you can actually take a video that's three minutes long which is awesome. It can only take it in vertical format. I do wish that you could do it in landscape, but vertical is okay too for what you would be using this for, which is to capture those really fast moments that pass so fast that you wouldn't have time to take it if you were trying to take out your phone from your pocket and record those moments. Pictures are pretty decent too. I would say if there's plenty of light out there, you can get really high quality video and photo files. Nighttime, maybe not so much, but that's to be expected out of something like this where the camera is in something so small. And let's talk a little bit about the audio. So one of my favorite features when using these glasses is actually to listen to audiobooks during my drive. It allows me to listen to it and hear the audio really well while not blocking out the important sounds that I need to here when I'm driving on the road. So I've taken calls with these glasses. I've listened to music. I've listened to audiobooks. Audio always comes out really clearly. And then when I'm taking calls, I've never had anybody complain about not being able to hear me on the other end. So works really well in that regard as well. Now, in terms of the AI features, a lot of the announcements at this year's MetaConnect event were about how the Ray-Ban Meta smart glasses are expanding on those AI features. I think it's gonna be really interesting to be able to have the glasses view your world and be able to ask questions and it being able to understand the context of those questions. So example would be looking out at the world and then asking the glasses to identify what you're looking at. There's a whole bunch of other examples too, but to be honest, I haven't taken advantage of the AI functionality too much with these glasses because you don't really use AI features all the time. Whereas for videos and pictures, that's a function that you're doing throughout the day. So I think with all of these things being considered, the big reason why Meta didn't release a new version of the Ray-Ban Meta smart glasses is because they made their first iteration of this product better than 
most people thought it would be. If you look at all the reviews on uh, th these glasses, I think most of them came up positive. There might be little features here and there that people wish would be improved on, but overall, I think Meta accomplished much more that even they thought was possible. And Mark Zuckerberg very briefly mentioned this on the keynote. They had so much demand that they had trouble keeping up with the orders. And overall, I just think it's a awesome wearable product. Now, some of the things I would have liked to see would have been maybe more frame options. That's what it really comes down to for a product like this. People want to wear something that looks good. The Ray-Bans look really good. It comes in two styles. There's a, bunch, a whole bunch of different colors you can choose from, but it would have been nice to see some more different styles of frames. Uh, but I totally get why this was not really possible because if they wanted to do a different frame, they would have had to redesign the, the sizing of all the components and things like that. And that could have impacted the performance of the product. So no biggie in that regard. They did release a limited edition transparent frame, which I think is really cool for people that want to buy it as a collector's item or who just like to have a, a different style of frame. It shows all the cool internals of what makes up the Ray-Ban Meta smart glasses. I think for anybody who's really into tech, this would be a really fun item to have. Mark Zuckerberg also mentioned that they're also able to use the latest lens technology. So if you're interested in having transition lenses, one of the big problems with transitions is when you're outside, it turns dark and that's great. But when you transition into an indoor environment, it takes some time for the lenses to transition back into a clear lens. So you'll get these funny looks from people that are wondering, why are you wearing sunglasses inside? But supposedly this transition lens technology has gotten much better. And on the latest Ray-Ban Meta Smart Glasses, you have the option to choose the latest transition lenses. So that'll be really interesting to look at. I'm actually thinking about placing an order for those limited edition glasses, but the problem is I already have two Ray-Ban Meta Smart Glasses. One of these is dedicated for the car. So this is the sunglass version. I think if you're shopping for the Ray-Ban Meta Smart Glasses and you want something to use while you're driving, you still need a dedicated one that just has the darker lenses because transitions don't really work very well inside the car. Your windshield already has UV protection on it and the transition lenses are activated by the UV light. So I have that pair for the car and then I have the ones that you see right now. So this is just a, a clear lens that I would wear if I didn't want to wear my regular glasses. So those are just some of my thoughts on the recent Meta Connect event and Ray-Ban smart glasses. The awesome thing about these glasses are that they keep pushing software updates that just keep making the product better and better. I do hope eventually they'll update the hardware, but I think the product is still in a great place. There's no other competitor out there that can match the looks of this and the features. So I think they're still number one with this product group, but just seeing what they've been trying to do with the Orion product, I know eventually we're going to get an update on the hardware for these, and I think that's going to be really amazing. If they're able to make it smaller, if they're able to improve camera quality or introduce landscape recording, there's going to be a lot of really interesting things. If you guys are wondering how I'm recording this footage, let me record some footage from my Raymond Man smart glasses. So I actually have the Osmo Pocket 3 that is a gimbal camera. Um, it's recording this on landscape mode. I have my DJI mic on and I actually have this zip tied to my Bokken MagSafe car mount. And that's how I'm getting these shots.